Welcome to 288M Module 7, and we are in Chapter 7 in our book, the MCSA Guide to Networking with Windows Server 2016. And if you are taking the exam, 70-741 is what it aligns to. So we're going to take a look at implementing Network Policy Server. And we're going to be going over Network Policy Server and Radius, which are things we touched on, on the, in the uh, previous module, but we're going to go into a little bit more detail. So with the network policy server, we can define what you can do, what uh, roles you can do, what rules, uh, what type of access you can have. And the NPS architecture, and this may be on the quiz for you, so you may want to uh, take note of this, uh, includes four different features. Remote authorization dial-in service, or RADIUS, uh, RADIUS proxy, and RADIUS accounting. So let's take a look and see what those are. Network Policy Server, that's Microsoft's implementation of the RADIUS protocol. So RADIUS is on pretty much any major uh, product that's either a firewall or a VPN uh, concentrator that's out there. And uh, RADIUS is also in certain some switches as well, some high-end switches. So uh, RADIUS is definitely a protocol that is open source to people, but you can uh, make your own version of it, which is exactly what Microsoft did. So uh, we've got an access client, which is a user or device attempting to access the network. Then we have network access server, NAS, which is a protocol that uh, allows you to, to connect uh, access clients to the network. So uh, I've set up all different types of, of radius servers, uh, wireless access point type connections, VPN servers, pretty much every different option of uh, routing remote access using radius and not using radius, I've done at least once. So a lot of experience with this, and I can tell you that Radius is uh, not that uh, difficult to set up once you do it, you know, after the first time, and you kind of understand how it works. <clears throat> Excuse me, but um, uh, you know, after you get your first implementation done, you can really do a lot of great things with it. Network Policy Server, which is part of Windows, can respond with one of three types of messages when you, your client tries to connect. You can either get the access reject access challenge or access accept, which of course would allow the traffic to pass. The NAS sends an accounting request message to the network policy server to be logged. So the server sends an accounting response message which acknowledges it was received and then of course if everything is good then traffic starts going. So the RADIUS proxy can be inserted between the NAS and the NPS servers to help manage the load on the NPS servers. So why would you want to even use Ra RADIUS? So RADIUS centralizes control over authentication. Uh, so it gives you one place to uh, control all these different devices, and it doesn't have to be just Windows devices. It can be other devices that support RADIUS. Standardizing a RADIUS requires all NAS devices to be RADIUS clients. So everything else that connects to the RADIUS server is considered a client, even if it's not a computer. If it's a, a switch or a router, it could be considered a client. So this is the RADIUS infrastructure. It's a little bit complicated, but we've got several different types of uh, RADIUS things that are going on here. So you've got the two RADIUS servers basically being used uh, for um, you know, the redundancy, and then on the right-hand side here, and then you've got the domain controller and the RADIUS accounting server. So you could have the RADIUS server and the RADIUS accounting server all be the same server, but in a larger network, you're going to separate those out so it doesn't get overloaded. Then in the center section, you have a dial-up server, a Wi-Fi, uh, a switch, you know, these various different ways um, that the traffic is going to be coming through into the network. And then on the left-hand side, you have the clients themselves. So there's two reasons to set up a network policy server architecture with RADIUS. RADIUS centralizes, as we mentioned, control over authentication and authorization, and it standardizes uh, on RADIUS, requires all NAS devices to be RADIUS clients. So I mentioned that already. Uh, NPS standard configuration has wizards that walk you through these uh, policy settings. Um, I find that uh, watching videos on setting these, these up is a little bit easier than reading about it because there's a lot of different things that can go wrong and seeing these kinds of setups are, uh, makes it much easier uh, than just reading about it. But, you know, everybody has their own way of learning. Communication between a RADIUS client and a server is validated using a shared secret. So you not only have your Windows username and password, but you also have your RADIUS password as well. Uh, so it should be at least 22 characters and should include uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and symbols. 
and can be up to 128 characters. But uh, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be using 22 characters, unless you set up a group policy that says it does. Depending on the type of NAS, two general types of authentication methods are used. You've got password or you've got certificate. So four password-based methods are supported. MSCHAP, uh, which isn't used so much, but MSCHAP version 2 is. Then you've got uh, the more open source CHAP version, and you've got the password authentication protocol, which is also more open source. Uh, that's not used quite as often as it was in the past, but it is the uh, preferred method for using L2TP type of VPN. So PAP is still out there. Certificate-based method is EAP. Um, so that is uh, the certificate authentication. It's much more secure than using the password because, you know, passwords can be guessed. Uh, the authentic authentication for EAP is using transport layer security. So, of course, it's going to be using a certificate. Protected um, extensible authentication protocol is PEEP. It's a special way to encrypt the password being sent using MSChat version 2. So if you're using version 2 of MSChat, you're going to be using PEEP to do that authentication. So that is the most secure way of doing things. Simple radius uh, infrastructure in a large network has a few drawbacks. Well, there's you know, not great fault tolerance, and you can possibly overload the server, which is why uh, that previous uh, picture showed more than one radius server on there. A solution is to use radius proxies with multiple radius servers. So the uh, proxy will then send it off to the different servers, helping you to load balance the traffic. Radius accounting. Remember, there was a separate server just for radius accounting, and it's a log of the different access and account requests. So every time somebody logs in, logs out, or does anything, there is an accounting for that, and the radius accounting does that so you can see if anybody's doing things they're not supposed to be doing. Stronger certificate-based authentication is recommended. A certificate, of course, is the way to do that, and you can have a cert certification authority so you can either use a public certification authority where you can buy something, say, from Network Solutions, GoDaddy, Register.com, or you can use a private one, which could be your own domain controller. But then you have to use group policy to get that computer to trust it. Otherwise, it's going to show up as an untrusted certificate. So there's uh, different types of certificates. The client has to have a com uh, computer certificate. The server has to have a certificate. And the user should have a certificate. And you can use the, that uh, on a smart card to verify the user's identity. So you can add an additional form factor authentication to that if you choose to. Certificates must meet different criteria, be valid, configured for the purpose, and issued by a trusted certification authority. And again, it could be public, or it could be your own domain controller if you configure group policy correctly. For a client to accept the cert, the cert must meet several requirements. Certificate uh, name, subject name cannot be blank, must be trusted by a root certificate authority, which would be in your own certificate store on your computer, on your client. And the purpose of the certificate is for server authentication. You got to use RSA, uh, which is the algorithm, and the min minimum key size is at least 2048. So a lot of, a lot of keys out there in the past might have been 1024. We've got to go at least 2048. 4096 is really a preferred way of going it, going about it. And as technology moves forward, we'll probably go even uh, double that as well. If the subject alternative name or the SAN uh, extension is used, the certificate must contain the NPS server's DNS name. Otherwise, there'd be no way to resolve it. So there's two different types of policies for NPS. You've got connection request policies and network policies. So the connection policies specify radius servers that can handle the connection request. So it's got to know where to go. The network policies specify which users and groups have access. And, of course, you can lock people down to certain times of the day or night they can access. Connection request policies are used to specify which radius servers perform the authentication. So you can define these different policies. And you've got uh, four different options there. You have unspecified, so anybody can do it. Remote desktop gateway, in case you're using uh, you know, that type of technology. Remote access server, which is the kind that we're uh, talking about here, uh, or a vendor-specific policy. So you can use some third-party types of things as well. When a radius server receives a radius access request, 
a message from a client, the client's attributes are checked against this policy. So once you set up the policy that we saw in the previous slide, uh, those four down there below, uh, it has to match that in order to move forward. So creating conditions allows you to control who can access, how they access, and when they access. Um, the following groups uh, of condition attributes can be used in a connection request. So you've got the name, the connection properties, day and time, client properties, and gateway properties, how they're getting from one place to another. If you don't have those gateway properties, you might just be stuck using the one subnet and not the subnets you actually need to get to. And then there's the uh, groups, day and time restrictions, connection properties, clients, and gateway information there as well. So in addition to these network connections, you can specify the network policy constraints. Authentication timeout, idle timeout. So when people stop sending traffic, when are you going to kick them off? Day and time restrictions as well. And the port type. Uh, authentication type for VPN can be password or certificate based. So if you're using for VPNs, you can use one or the other. Now the multiple uh, and band, I'm sorry, multi-link and bandwidth allocation, that's really for dial-up. So if you are, uh, there was a time when you could use multiple phone lines to double or quadruple the amount of uh, speed you're getting because dial-up is so slow. But uh, now we don't really use that quite so much anymore. Uh, I guess it's, it's theoretically possible you could use more than one ISP to do the same thing. You've got IP filters, filters based on the client's computer's IP address if you choose to use that the type of encryption settings you're going to allow, and also the IP settings that you're going to assign uh, to the client. So you've got the client has to be assigned some sort of an IP address from the inside of your network in order to get into it. Templates can reduce the amount of work and minimize the chance of error. So you can use a template that comes with uh, the routing remote access, NPS, and radius. And there's four different types. There's the shared secret type, the radius clients, remote radius servers, and IP filters. So if any one of those uh, or more apply to you, then you can use the templates which are already pre-configured for you based on what you would like to do. So if, let's say you decide you want a template. NPS can export the templates to an XML file and then be imported into another uh, network policy server. So if you have multiple radius servers all running this network policy server, then you can certainly uh, export the, you know, after you uh, customize it the way you want it, you can export it to the other servers so they can load balance that traffic. After configuring the policies and templates, you can back up the entire configuration to an XML file. Now, of course, of course, if you are backing up your server, that's great, but it may be difficult to locate if you just want this one file. So it might not be a bad idea just to back up this file and keep it into a special folder that's maybe NPS backup, something like that, so it's easy to get to in case you need to export it you know, off to another server or recover when there's some sort of a disaster. So we can use uh, the netsh command uh, for, uh, for the backup. We can export and import using that as well. So we talked a lot about radius, what radius is, the different types of accounting for radius, and the different types of encryption uh, and access methods. And um, you know, there's, there's a lot of good things in here. Radius is something a lot of companies use for access into their network. So this is really something that is going to be useful for you out in your career. So go ahead and get started on your labs and quizzes. Don't forget the uh, uh, answers to your quizzes are in your reading assignments as well as in these PowerPoint slides which are also available to you separate from the video.